I'm Adam Spitar, and this is Telecast. With us today is Scott Watermasic, who is the VP of Product Development at, at, at Intelligent, uh, responsible for a lot of our products uh, in our product side, including Community Server. And so with the release of Community Server 2007, we wanted to talk about uh, what are the differences between Community Server 2007 and 2.1. So, Scott. So the, uh, the biggest differences you, know, you would see as a, as a user is that we've rewritten our, our, theming, in, our theming engine and skinning engine. Um, so we have a new engine called Chameleon. <laughs> Chameleon is set up to make it easier for developers to create themes, for developers to expose properties that other people can, can then change you know, via the browser, and then also to allow users in a browser to not only change themes and create their own themes, but to also share them with other people and to download. Um, it ends up being a, a single file that you download. Um, you can send it to your friends. It includes images, CSS, the whole. <laughs> Whole kit and caboodle, all in one quick and easy package. Cool. So that's Chameleon and uh, Morpheus, right? <laughs> right. So, so Morpheus is the best way to describe Morpheus is it's kind of taking the provider system that we're using and then further exposing providers that, that other users could tap into. Um, as an example, you can now store your membership system outside of Community Server. Um, you have multiple Community Servers using the same membership system. Um, you can share a membership system between different sites. <laughs> So as an example, uh, we just launched a new store or a download center for Community Server at getcommunityserver.org. And you know, we, we share membership between communityserver.org and that site without writing, without having to actually write code in Community Server to expose it or having to write code in the store to do anything, you know, you know anything different. Um, we have a couple clients who are actually running you know, multiple communities that all share um, a single membership system. So you, one username and password to get you access to Five or ten sites at a time. So, what's uh, what's the um, like the um, authentication mechanism between the two? Um, like, just, like for example, the the get community server com and, and get community server or community server. It's server. just the it's just the out of the box. Um, right, right now, the uh, the mechanism is just SQL Server. Mm -hmm. You know, so you end up having two sites um, that, that know how to talk to the same SQL Server. Okay. Um, we've talked about or thought about doing web services or something in the future. Uh, you know, right now, community server makes. Makes heavy use. It really tries to personalize the experience per user, um, show you content relevant to that user, and so the overhead right now just doesn't work out. Um, it, it's possible we just haven't thought it through far enough to, to get to, to pure membership or port pure web services for the membership. Cool. <laughs> so what else? So there's the Chameleon, Morpheus, and um, so so those are the, the, the two big hitters. Um, also, <laughs> shipping community server. We have a brand new theme, um, a nice, beautiful, you know, kind of look and feel. Um, Try to again try to pull out you know users and try to expose who's online. Um, so we have a nice uh, yeah. we have a nice who's online um, with the avatars on the front page with yeah. avatars um, linking to the users' profiles. There's a brand new the profile page has been updated. At least the, the viewing profile page has been updated. So you now can see who your friends are. Um, you can share with people your friends. Um, we'll load it. <laughs> we'll load one. It's like one to five RSS feeds for you. Um, on the page, so you can kind of personalize the page. So if you were to view my page on communityserver.org, you would see I, I, I showed a most recent five or ten posts from my own blog, um, and you can see the posts that I've made on Community Server, you know, kind of in an easy, convenient way. Um, we've done some work <coughs> that we had exposed uh, a little bit in, in service packs for blogs to enable files to be easily uploaded into blogs. So we always supported the mechanism of, of storing files in a file gallery <laughs> or a photo gallery. Um, which works great if you're writing a post about a presentation you did and you want to link to that and you want to track who downloads it or allow people to make comments directly on the download or to pick or if you have a photo gallery of a trip and you want to build images you know kind of around that and allow people to comment and, and tag it and kind of look at that stuff but at the same time there's a lot of times where people you'd be writing a post and you want to do I'll write a post about community server and I want to include two or three screenshots or I want to include uh, you know some a, a sample code or a file or something I've written I don't necessarily want to put that in file gallery or a photo they're, they're options mm -hmm. but you know but, but the the images are just screenshots of, of what I'm what I'm working on, and so I don't need a photo gallery. I don't need people commenting on it. I don't need to to, to check permissions or anything. I just need to push files up on a server and have them show up. You know, kind of in yeah. uh, you know in my post. So we support that via the, the MetaBlog API. Oh wow! So you can use a tool like Windows Live Writer. Um, it's kind of my, my pet favorite at the moment, where you can just drag images on while you're writing a post, click send, and now the images just wind up on a server. That's awesome. Um, well, I, I've got clients right now. That's that's been our. Traditional solution is, and it's been nice through like the content selector. So when when I have a, a client who wants to put images of, you know, whatever they're doing, so uh, but they'll they'll do exactly what you're talking about. Is they've got 
two photo galleries, yep. uh, one for videos and one for blog images, and they yep. go into the content selector, select select uh, blog and, images, and upload and it there. And that works. I mean, it yeah. just depends on if you're, <laughs> if at the end of the day, you know, the, the images stand on their own, mm -hmm. then that, that's usually a compelling and thing. And they never, and a lot of times, yeah. <laughs> they need the content to, yeah. to, to make sense. Yep. Um, so we do that. Um, we enable a similar experience in a browser. You, of course, can't drag images on on a, on a pure browser. I mean, you can with like mm -hmm. ActiveX, but you can't in a simple, you know, kind of HTML, you know, setup drag images. So we have a we updated the content selector to uh, that will allow you to actually add images, you know, as you're writing a post and and insert them directly into the post. We also now support doing the same thing though for photo gallery and file gallery. So you can use content selector to actually add images or files to the file gallery as you're writing the post. Um, there's some UI, um, there's a manage, uh, I think it's called manage files, you know, section of the individual blog um, control panel area where you can actually manage those files so you can delete files, remove them. I don't think you can rename them, I think you just delete um, and kind of add to it. So you can actually, from from a, for someone who's on like a site, like something like codebetter.com mm -hmm. or something like that where, you know, they have, you know, 50 or 100 bloggers, you actually can now, you can turn it off as, as a site admin so you don't have to worry about um, you know, people storing too many files in there. You can control the, uh, the, the the total size of what goes in there and the size of individual files. But it gives you a place where you can drop files and you don't actually have to write about them in a post. You can just store them somewhere in your blog and then send out a link and say, hey, you know, Adam, check out, you know, this text file or this, you know, zip file or not. Very cool. Um, I'm trying to think. There's always more stuff too. You, yeah. get, you get very familiar with it. Uh, we improved our, our feed burner support in Community Server 2007, so we now make it even easier to uh, to, to resyndicate or to allow feed burner to, to syndicate your blog. Uh, we used to call it just generic feed sharing or mm -hmm. something like that, but it's really geared towards feed burner. Um, they, they provide a, a really good free service. Um, they now actually we they now actually have su uh, support for stats, and we with a click of a click of a checkbox. <coughs> will support the stats for you, so, wow. so you can set that up pretty easily. Um, and then, you know, <laughs> I'm sure I'm leaving off someone's what? someone's killer feature, but uh, a lot of bug fixes, um, yeah. a lot of things with <clears throat> with the forums along, uh, you know, managing if a post's been read and if it's not been read. Um, we also released a service pack for Community Server 2.1, so this will be our last service pack, <laughs> barring any security, you know, mm -hmm. issues um, that were released for 2.1. So. For those of you who are happy with your 2.1 install, I mean, we got probably 50 bugs, 100 bugs, I don't know. I mean, yeah. it depends how you define bug and, a, and differences in how a feature works. Um, but we have a service pack for you that's, that's pretty easy to install. Cool. Um, yeah, and if we, if we come up with what other features are in 2.1, we'll, we'll drag somebody in and talk about that, or no, 2.1. In uh, 2007, we'll, we'll drag them in and, and discuss them, so yep. we'll we'll, get more details on that. And so the other thing to kind of highlight is that uh, along with our new theme, um, we released a new community server.org theme. That, that matches and, and works with the store, <laughs> integrates the experience. Um, it's, it's much easier to purchase a license now. Um, you know, through the store, it's actually much easier to install it. We actually just send you a key that you can install. <laughs> we bring the license down. Um, we also have a, a wiki and a, and a and KB prototype, I guess right. you would call it, as, as part of community server, not part of community server, part of community server site. We'll hopefully eventually be part of the community server. But we actually moved our documentation to that. So our documentation is growing by leaps and bounds on you know on a on a daily basis. So Yep. So like like you said, we've got the, the community server uh, the doc is it docs.communityserver.org is the wiki? Yep. Okay, and then uh, so docs.communityserver.org um, and then there's a KB which is also accessible to be that. Yeah, docs.communityserver.org slash wiki. Slash wiki. So it's kinda okay. integrated it, it, instead of looking as a as a KB and and, and wiki at the moment, we, we do plan on <laughs> enabling both scenarios. It's more it's more set up along the lines of as an integrated um, way of, of, of documenting or, or sharing something. Yep. So the KB and wiki kind of play together. You know, we're it's, again it's a prototype and we're doing some work, but they they play together pretty nicely. And hopefully, in a few versions or next version, whatever we'll, we'll talk about that soon. Uh, those will be part of the community server product that you can buy and and use Correct. at your organization or for your uh, enthusiast side or whatever. So, yep. Well, fantastic, Scott. Thanks for talking to us, and uh, thank you for watching. Thanks we'll for talk me. to you in about a week.